What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. I just want to say thanks to the uh, individual who sent me an email today telling me that um, Ice Cream Fitness linked um, a link on his site or his channel, excuse me, to my one of my videos about how to spot if somebody's natural or not. And um, in the video, Jason Blaha goes on to say that him and I had a run-in, which I hope he doesn't consider it that we had a run-in. It was more like a disagreement because I had information that I felt like I had to put out there because he had some information. And there's no doubt that somebody probably told him about Dory's insulin use and stuff. I don't think Jason made it up, but it was just wrong factual information that was given to him. And since I did have some facts... I wanted to put it out there. so And I had contacted him through an email or private message or whatever and explained to him that I wasn't picking on him and you know I didn't mean any harm by it. I was just trying to put the information out and we kind of squashed it. So Jason, if you think that we had a run-in, I mean, I don't consider that a run-in. I just consider it a disagreement of information and really no harm, no foul. And, you know, it was squashed. Like, I have no problem with you or Ice Cream Fitness or anything. That being said, today we're going to talk about why doctors are so reluctant to prescribe HRT and why they hate steroids so much. Now, I'll tell you a few stories in this and of course some facts as always. Well, the only thing that I can figure is why doctors won't prescribe more often is because they just don't know enough about it. They know what they're fed through studies and what other doctors tell them at different meetings and stuff and they make the decisions based on what evidence they have. They don't actually make the decisions based on what feedback they get from themselves or what they dig into. Doctors are kind of interesting like that. A lot of them don't go out of their way to seek out information. They'll have the information given to them or they'll just basically look at the first thing and not really dig that much into it. So what they'll do is use the information that says Androl 50 gives you liver cancer. Well, it was eight tablets a day in the study. Nobody in their right mind takes eight tablets a day that gave them liver cancer. There also was a study that said 600 milligrams a day of testosterone had no lasting side effects, but they don't really use that one. So they pick the one that says horrible side effects and they leave the one that says no side effects and they don't use it at all. So I first had approached my doctor when I was younger and said, I'm going to go on steroids. And he told me straight up, don't go on them, don't bother because they don't work. He told me flat out they don't work. When I came back for my next blood test and I was almost 60 pounds heavier and got on the scale, his jaw dropped. And he couldn't figure out how I had gained this weight if steroids didn't work. Well, that's because they did work and they do work. But all the information he was given was saying that they're not going to build muscle at an accelerated rate. There's all these side effects. They have no, really no place in the world and should all be eliminated. Now, this is coming from the same exact doctor who I had a shoulder injury. And I went to see him for it. He had concluded that I had pulled some kind of tendon or something in my shoulder, and he gave me pain relievers for it. Now, at the time, I didn't have insurance, so to hook me up, he gave me samples. Well, he gave me samples of something called Ultram, Tramadol. This is a, it's a narcotic, first of all. It doesn't give you that weird high feeling like Vicodin does, but it is from the opiate family, and it is addictive. And he was giving out samples because the company was giving him samples to give out to push the product. Well, now it's a class 3 controlled schedule drug, just like Vicodin or anything else because of the addiction factor to it, but they didn't even know it back then. Or they did and they didn't claim it, or somebody forgot to tell them, or what the deal was. He was giving these things away. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. You're giving away a narcotic that people can get hooked on, but you don't want someone to take testosterone so that they can have a better physique or feel better. That doesn't make any sense at all. I've had several other friends that were younger like 31, 32, walk in the doctor and say, they, you know, I have this symptom, that symptom, this symptom. They get tested, they get low testosterone levels, they get a prescription like that for testosterone. 31 years old, they have a prescription for testosterone, they take it 100% legally. They can go in the locker room at the gym with their bottle of testosterone, any needle, fill it up, shoot themselves in the middle of the locker room, shoot themselves, shoot themselves in the middle of the gym if they want to, and it's 100% legal and they're like 30 years old. So I think it really depends on who the doctor is and what information they're getting and what they're looking into and how much they really know about it, which a lot of them don't know that much about it. They Over and over again, they're being fed things like 
bad, 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 bad. So they thought bad all the time. And now there's low T commercials on TV. They start prescribed testosterone gel, which is a giant pain in the ass with this stuff because you got to rub it all over you. If you go to hug your wife, you can get on her and screw her up. You get, you know, if you have kids, you can rub it on the kids by accident and screw them up. But they're TV commercials now. So if this stuff was so bad for you, why are you so readily handing it out now for low testosterone levels? And they talk straight out about human growth hormone being the, the next fountain of youth. And it can absolutely help people. There was a, a special on 60 Minutes one night. They gave it to this guy who was like 75 years old. He looked terrible, had poor health. They started giving him growth hormone therapy. You know, six months later, he looked phenomenal. He was rock climbing. He looked great. And they said, this is pretty much the fountain of youth. Well, throughout time, some of these doctors are actually starting to look at it and say, okay, what, you know, let's see what else besides making you grow taller this stuff can do. So now they have off-label use. Well, now some of the doctors are like, well, to do this, I have to get a certain insurance policy that'll cover any kind of neglect or issues from the growth hormone if it harms somebody. But they're going to pay an arm and a leg to get that because insurance companies don't want to cover it because the insurance companies think this stuff is bad too. So that's why a lot of them don't prescribe the HRT because the insurance companies are not going to cover certain things so that in case something happens that the doctors are covered. But then again, there's plenty of doctors that are very... I don't want to say new age, but they're very willing to say, you know, if we've been giving estrogen to women in menopause all these years, why can't we give testosterone to men? So you have like that opposite ends of the spectrum. And I find that either they're totally into giving it to you so you have a better quality of life, or they're so against it that you walk in and they can kick you out of the office because you keep asking them for it. It just, it's one end of the spectrum or the other, and there's nothing in between. I can't really figure out what the deal is except for a couple of studies that were done many years ago on super high dosage on people that were already ill in Lionel Zato. That's pretty much where we're sitting at now. So with all the advances we've made through science and medicine and everything else, we're still holding on to Lionel Zato's brain tumor from the 80s and a study done in 1985 with eight androgel tablets a day, which no human's going to tolerate eight tablets a day. And that's what they're holding on to and they're still using for medical proof. So I don't know. It's... It varies from doctor to doctor, state by state, stuff like that. My advice is to, if you're a certain age, find a life extension foundation. Find one of those, those um, they call them the gift of life. There's another place, I think it's called, where they try to do like longevity programs. And they give you human growth hormone, testosterone, anti-estrogens, whatever it takes to make you feel better, to bring your hormones back up to youthful levels. Which, you know what? My personal opinion is you should have every right to if they're giving that woman estrogen replacement for her menopause. If her levels drop and she can be compensated by giving her a hormone, the same thing should be available for guys. Training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. Guys, listen to your doctor for some things when you have to, but use your brain. Just because the doctor says it's bad doesn't mean it's bad because the doctors don't know everything and sometimes they're wrong too and that causes issues for you www.biosutraining.com is the blog and we're out.